So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how you can animate SVGs and why you might look at animating SVGs in adaptive cards. Going to talk about how to do it. We'll have a live demo and then we'll crack on with adding that to the SVGs uh, and the adaptive cards. So let me just quickly share my screen. Um, there we go. So uh, what we're going to do today, like I said, we're going to look at animating SVGs in adaptive cards. Now, I post a lot about SVGs in Power Apps and I thought, oh, I'm going to try and give that a go in adaptive cards. So before we navigate to the demo, uh, for anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Christine Kolodzewski. I work as a principal consultant at a company called Computer Center. I'm based in London in the UK and I tend to spam everyone's Twitter and LinkedIn feed a lot with uh, different geeky stuff. Um, that QR code is to all of my social so if anyone wants to connect with me, please feel free to scan that in. And I know that David will share that in the chat as well. So let's have a look at why we might use animation uh, or why we why it might be beneficial. So first of all, the stats. 90% of the information transferred or transmitted to our brains is visual. That means that uh, as long as you're not visually or cognitively impaired in any way, most of what you what your brain is processing is what you see, which means that naturally animations are going to be more attractive to the eye. Anything graphical is going to be a lot more attractive to the eye. Now, scientific research has proven that if you use graphical objects to support instructions or text, so by using uh, images and icons, your uh, performance or uh, your brain's performance is going to increase by 88%. So you're more likely to understand instructions or an application or anything else if there are supplementary icons. Now, I don't know about you, but I've put many IKEA furniture before, and I don't think I would have been able to do that without the uh, kind of thorough guides with, with all of the pictures. Now, uh, around 87% of all the information of, oh, sorry, of all I use is process animation before they see any text. So you may have seen on the first slide, I did kind of catch it there. I added an animation and I can guarantee that around at least 80% of you looked at the animation first before you even looked at any of the text or anything else that was on that slide. And the last part, the best reason it is just 100% fun. I absolutely love animating SVGs. I learned a lot about from Robin as well. Robin is the SVG king and uh, it is just really, really fun. Now, before before we go into the demo, there is something that I want to mention, and that's around limitations. Now, uh, the one thing I didn't want to is obviously talk to you about the demo, and then someone tagged me on Twitter to say, Christine, I've watched the demo. You lied to me. <laughs> so I have put a couple of limitations. However, last night I came up with another idea on how to overcome the um, limitations, and I'm going to show you that today as well. So the first kind of limitations that everyone will be aware of is that there is a payload limit on adaptive cards. This means that uh, we are limited as to uh, the size of an image or an SVG that we can pass in line. Uh, if the uh, card payload exceeds the limitations that we have, the card will literally just not render in any application. Then uh, by using inline CR in the, uh, SVGs, we do have some limitations around the CSS attributes that you can use. So things like Gaussian blur, linear gradients, and some of the other things are unfortunately not supported in inline HTML uh, uh, within the adaptive card just yet. Again, I have found a way to work around that too. Then uh, they are not supported in model windows. So this is only applicable to uh, the SVGs that are uh, written in line as well within the adaptive card. Like I said before, I have found a workaround to this as well. And the last, the worst reason, the best limitation is they are just addictive. So once you start animating things, I promise you there is literally no way uh, back from there. So let's dive into the demo instead. So what we're going to do is I'm going to animate a very basic SVG first, and then I'll show you how we can add that to the adaptive card itself. OK, so for the uh, kind of animation I'm going to do today is uh, Disney logo. Uh, as we know, we have the Power Platform Conference in just over two weeks. Uh, one thing that I'm super excited for, apart from the conference, which is going to be incredible, is visiting Disneyland. I'm a huge Disney fan, and I thought this would be a perfect kind of use case for, for animation today. So to uh, kind of go over the structure of an SVG for anyone that hasn't worked with an SVG before, SVGs comprise really of, uh, I guess, three main elements. So we always have the opening SVG tag here. So this is what we will declare things like the namespace. This is what we will declare width, height, if we wanted the view box and all of that. Then we have our object. So that could be a path, as you can see. Now paths will comprise of pretty much tags. These are all the kind of cubic beziers, all of the curves that you get in an SVG. 
or geometrical shapes. So that could be like a rectangle and eclipse, uh, pretty much anything, a circle as an example. And then at the very end of this VG, we will have the closing SVG tag. Now, if we want to add any styles, we know that we can't link uh, any style sheets within the SVG. We have to use inline styles. So to do that, we have to open a style tag in here. Style, and then we'll close that before I forget. And then we can start declaring the styles directly within here. So let's uh, start with the selector. So for the selector, we will just use path. We only have one path in here. Uh, if we want to, we can add obviously a class as an example. So we can just say uh, class, let's say uh, we can just do it uh, test as an example, and we can just uh, to test as an example. So you can do that just like you would normally in CSS. Then we'll open the curly brackets and before we start adding any animation, let's actually create an animation. So to do animation with SVGs, we have three options. Normally we have JavaScript, uh, we have uh, CSS, and then we also have what's called SMIL. SMIL stands for Synchronized Multimedia Integrated Language. Now uh, we know that we can't add inline JavaScript in here, so that's out of the box for us. Um, and then SMIL uh, is great, but SMIL isn't supported on mobile devices as well. So for today's demo, we are going to use CSS just because it is supported on pretty much every browser, including Internet Explorer. If anyone is using it, hopefully no one is. So to do that, we will start by declaring keyframes. So that's how we do animation in CSS. And then we'll open the curly brackets. Now within here, we have two options. We can either declare the starting and the finishing point of animation. This will be uh, done using from and to, or we can declare what's called checkpoints. Well, I call them checkpoints. I don't think they're actually called checkpoints. So to do that, we can just say, uh, let's just give um, the animation some names. So for the name, let's just start with as an example, fade. So that will be the name of animation. And let's just say we'll go from, and then we'll go from opacity zero. So we want that to be uh, transparent at first. And then we want that to go to, and we'll go to opacity one. So we want this to kind of breathe into our screen. Now, once we've done that, all we have to do is assign that animation to our SVG. So I'm just going to pop that into here and we'll do fade. Let's say duration, we can just do three seconds as an example, and then we can just do infinite. So it's doing it infinitely. And as you can see, that's animated already. Now, one thing that I really dislike is when you can see that resetting point. So you can see that after three seconds, it's just literally resetting the animation. So to counteract that, we can actually use alternate. And alternate will alternate the finishing point of the animation. So you will now see the kind of breathe in and breathe in, uh, breathe out effect. So you can see that it's not disappearing and resetting the animation anymore. It's actually kind of breathing in and breathing um, out. So that's one way of, of doing an animation. Now let's just add some color as an example. So to add color again, I can add this within this keyframe. So we can declare as many as we want, or we can add another keyframe. I will add another keyframe just because I want to show you a different structure of, of keyframes. So we will just do, let's say, keyframe frames and then we'll just call it a uh, color as an example and then we'll open the curly brackets now for this one we are going to use checkpoints so with checkpoints we declare each of the points of the animation at which we want something else to happen so to do that we can do let's say we'll do increment it by 20 percent so we'll uh, let me just quickly do that 20 percent and then we'll change let's say fill to be uh, blue and then I will just quickly copy and paste because we know we don't want to rewrite all of that and then we will increment this by 20 percent so that would be 60 80 and 100 and all we have to do now is just change these colors so i can just say i want this to be green and i want this to be yellow i want this to be pink and i want this to be let's say uh, purple as an example and then once we've done that we again need to assign the animation so we can add the animation straight after this one we can just separate it with a comma and then add, I think we called it color. Did we call it the English white color? The American white color, perfect. Add the duration as well. So we'll just make five seconds so it's not jittering on the screen and we'll just make it infinite. And we should hopefully see in a second is that this will be changing colors. We'll just give it a second to uh, load. Color, five seconds, a color, color. Have we done everything? Um, perfect. Oh, I think I have too many of these. There we go. Let's just quickly have a look. Oh, I'm not sure why that's not changing color. <laughs> Let's just quickly check what have I done. Have I made a mistake? 20, 30, 60, 80, 100 uh, percent keyframes. Oh, I'm not sure why that's not changing color. Um, color. OK, let me just quickly remove that for some reason. I'm not sure what's happened there. How very bizarre. OK, so we have demo demons, as you can see. I am not quite sure what's happened uh, there. Let me just quickly pop a random snippet in here to see if that will that will work instead. 
And then let me just quickly call that uh, fight as an example. I'm not sure if my browser just needs refreshing. OK, for some reason that's not actually loading. I'm not sure what's happened with the uh, browser in here. I will just quickly go on to. Oh, that's why. Is it because I had 1000% over there? OK, so uh, to counteract that again, I can fix that quickly. So I already have a kind of pre-generated uh, animations for this anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. We will just quickly go to the Disney logo. So this is what I was going to quickly build for you. I am not really sure what's happened there, so apologies to anyone watching this back. So once we have the animation ready, now we can actually add that to our um, adaptive card. So if you've ever worked with Power Apps, as an example, uh, to add an SVG to your uh, Power Apps, the first thing that we need to do is we need to encode the actual SVG itself. So to do that, I will just click on, let's just quickly add an image to here. and the way we do it is we'll just open it in here. So to start with, we will do with uh, data, then we will do image and then slash SVG plus XML. There we go. Now we can declare the char set as well if we want to. And then after this, this is where we will pop our SVG text. So if I was to just quickly navigate back to my, to my um, Disney logo here, we'll copy all of that, control C, and then we'll go over here. And then we just pop that at the end there pop that into here and as you can see we now have this animation in um in the adaptive card now that's one way of doing it again this is quite simple animation and one thing that i like doing is really kind of creating pretty things so like neon glows gaussian blurs like i said and more kind of advanced animation uh so if you don't want to do it this way i will show you another way of how to do it so if you've worked with adaptive cards before you'll know that you can link any image externally from uh, any kind of host website so last night i was getting very creative and i thought hmm, how, why don't I find an SVG hosting website as an example, add that SVG there and link it back and it worked. So what I've done is I have put together a couple of SVGs just to quickly show you how that works. So the website that we're going to use is called SVG Share or SVG Air, I think that's how you say it. So all we have to do in here is we have to add the SVG into here. So I'll just go to choose file. Then we have to choose the SVG. So I'm just going to go for, let's say the rainbow SVG. Uh, that was actually the cloud. And I will just refresh the website again. The demo demons are coming in, which is absolutely fine. We always expect that to happen at some point. Let's try that again. And we'll go to Rainbow, go to Share, and that will generate the link for us. So now that will generate the link. So all I have to do is I have to go and get the uh, image source of that uh, specific image. So I'll just get that from here. We have to make sure that it has the format at the end as well. Otherwise, it will not render. And all we have to do is if I was to just go to the sunny icon as an example and go to the URL here, all I have to do is just replace that. And again, this is quite small, so I'm just going to make it slightly larger. And we'll do large. And as you can see, we now have that animation. So if you wanted to have some neon glow as an example, let me just change that to dark. And we will add one of uh, the things that I have done recently. So we'll just go to add SVG. We'll go to cheese file and we'll go for the Xbox one as an example. And I will not show you what that's doing yet. We'll go to share and then I'll scroll to the bottom and get that SVG file from here. Control C, go to adaptive card and I will just pop that on the top here. And then if you give it a second, uh, this is an animated kind of drawing neon SVG. So in a second, you'll see the Xbox logo and then it will pop like a neon light. There we go. Again, uh, we have an issue with a bit of a, a view box around the edges, but that's uh, expected as well. That's something we can uh, fix. And that is it for today's demo. So uh, I've shared the links as well and I'll pop them in the chat. And I know that David kindly offered to uh, share the links as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'm handing over to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Christine.